plan in New York. Good morning. Good morning. It's always good to be back here, Councilman, in my senatorial district. And uh, the action today, as we're joined uh, with uh, Councilman Indonis Rodriguez, who was the chair of the Transportation Committee in the City Council, and he's now the uh, commissioner of DOT, a real partner and moving around the city and seeing how imperative it is uh, to have uh, safe streets. And I say this over and over again, the prerequisite to prosperity is public safety and justice. And sometimes when we think about public safety, we think about the gun violence that we are witnessing in our city, but it's also about the traffic crashes. Uh, that is a form of safety. And when we have stood with of Families for Safe Streets, Transportation Alternative, and other advocates, uh, they'll tell you the trauma of losing a loved one uh, by a vehicle crash is traumatic as a person who loses a loved one uh, to gun violence. And it is imperative. The cornerstone of my administration is about creating a safe city uh, for New Yorkers. And so I'm joined here today, as I stated, with Donis Rodriguez, the Commissioner of DOT, uh, uh, Commissioner uh, uh, Sewell, uh, the Commissioner of NYPD, uh, Danny Harris from Transportation Alternative, uh, Chief Royster from Transit and New York City Police Department, uh, Rita Joseph, if she's not here, she'll be joining us as well, and my good friend Fabiola, who we have for so, so much together in so many different issues. Today she's repre representing families for safe streets, but she has been an advocate uh, for so many different important issues, particularly around immigration and Paco Abraham uh, streets, streets Pact. Uh, we, uh, today this announcement is important because you heard me say during the campaign trail uh, how important it is to bring together all of our city agencies uh, to collaborate to solve a problem. And that is why uh, the police commissioner is here with DOT, because we want the proper coordination of 
making our streets safe and ensure we have the enforcement that's needed to send the right message. Uh, right here at this intersection of Caton and Coney Allen Avenue uh, is a symbol of why it's imperative to move this conversation forward. We're here for a reason. Uh, the tragedies that happen here, uh, have, they have changed lives. They have impacted New Yorkers in a real way. In intersections, many people don't know, but it is at, at intersections that we're experiencing 79% of pedestrian injuries and 55% of our pedestri pedestrian fatalities occur in intersections. And I want to thank uh, the uh, Commissioner uh, Rodriguez for really leaning into this, looking at the numbers, and saying, how do we start to turn the corner on ending uh, traffic fatalities? And he identified this problem, and he was committed uh, to start taking a real uh, look at this and come up with a real enforcement plan. Uh, this intersection that we're standing at right now, uh, 26 injuries have occurred here in the past five years. And just on Coney Island Avenue, uh, we have five deaths, uh, which puts it in the most dangerous uh, areas of, of our city when it comes down to streets. Five deaths on Coney Island Avenue. Overwhelmingly, uh, when you think about who's impacted, the seniors, their children, uh, they are those with uh, impair impairments as they move throughout our city. And these fatalities are happening and these injuries are happening merely because people want to cross the street. Just to cross the street. They are feeling the trauma that comes with it. Unacceptable. And so we saw the reality of this last week on Gates Avenue where a 77 year old was struck. We saw it when the 15, when the 15 year old child Antonia uh, was walking across the street two days ago and lost her life we saw the tragic death of Arcelli uh, last month in Park Slope and so you continue to see uh, the impact and people are seeing the white ghost bikes all over our city to signify innocent people and families being traumatized uh, by uh, these fatalities and so I, as you know, I walk, I bike, I like to use the streets as much as possible uh, to get around. And we want to encourage that, but you can encourage it if you continue to have the level of fatalities that we're seeing. And there's something that many people don't acknowledge. It impacts communities of color, poor communities, immigrant communities. Uh, Fabiola, I know there's so many times we stopped and saw of those who were delivering goods and services and foods throughout the city uh, were struck and killed, and their families were traumatized. The primary breadwinners uh, lost their lives on these streets, and it just really impacts and disrupts the entire families. And this has been happening for a long time. Last year was a dark period for us. We saw the highest level of traffic fatalities in almost a decade. Uh, last year, no matter how much we lean into Vision Zero, uh, that vision was clouded uh, by the number of deaths that we witnessed in our city. And so this administration is clear on one message. We want to get stuff done. We want to be active. We want to move forward and continue to combine our city agencies to get the results we're looking for. So today, join with the commi both commissioners. We are, we are announced a major action to make our intersection safe. First, we are going to reimagine 1,000 intersections all over the city. Uh, there will be tra traffic common measures and recapturing space for pedestrians. We're going to improve traffic signals, raise crosswalks, and more. Uh, second, uh, you will see a better coordination and enforcement with the New York City Police Department. We're not going to wait until there's a fatality before we identify where the problem is located and have the proper enforcement when we do so. We're going to double down on enforcement at efforts of failure to yield violations where people are just failing to yield to pedestrians as they cross the streets. And we're going to enforce a new traffic rule. Uh, drivers and cyclists 
must fully stop at intersections, even if there are not four-way stop signs. Whenever there's a pedestrian uh, crossing or at the street corner about to cross. This is a very important initiative, and we want the federal government to reimagine um, when, where we can put stop signs and what we can do better. We're going to be communicating with uh, the federal government because it's imperative to understand the, the rules that were in place previous generations are no longer applicable to now, where we have busy streets with scooters, skateboarders, uh, all sorts of forms of movement on our streets is more than just vehicles. Our goal is to be clear. People must learn the rules of the road or get off the road. And that is the message we're sending out. And so we're, we're going to put in place a real campaign. We, we're calling it the campaign to really keep our cities uh, safe in a real way. Stop. Let them cross is going to be the campaign of real focus on allowing people to use our streets in a safe way. And so I said it again and again, and I'm going to continue to say, the prerequisite to prosperity is public safety and justice. Uh, that public safety also includes uh, traffic safety. Uh, you don't distinguish between the loss of a loved one through any form of violence, and traffic safety is a clear form of violence that has been ignored far too long. We will make sure New Yorkers feel safe, and we'll make sure New Yorkers are safe. And that's my goal. And I want to really thank my partners here, uh, both commissioners, Commissioner uh, Sewell and Commissioner uh, Rodriguez. And that's the teamwork we want in city government to get stuff done. Uh, Commissioner Rodriguez. Gracias, señor alcalde, por su compromiso de mejorar la seguridad de los peatones en la ciudad de Nueva York. Con su liderazgo y toda la ciudad, nosotros vamos a mirar cómo Nueva York va a garantizar de que la muerte que ocurre en las intersecciones sean reducidas, ya que el porciento es muy alto. 55% de las personas muertas en choque ocurren en las intersecciones y 75% de la por ciento de la persona herida también ocurren en las intersecciones. Thank you, Mayor Adams, for your leadership today on traffic safety and in many other issues. Thank you to Police Commissioner Sewell, elected officials, advocates, and of course Fabiola Mendieta Cuapio, Family for Safe Street, and all of the advocates here, including the great members of Transportation Alternative. Thank you all for the Thank you all for the advocate. As I say in our meetings that we had last week in our office, look forward to working with all of you. Design, the reason why we are here today is because we are determined to declare intersection as a sacred space and protected space in the city of New York. This is where, as you heard from Mayor Adams, pedestrians and cyclists are losing their life. Instead, we know this is where they are losing their life in the biggest numbers, as you heard from the mayor. Today, led by our mayor administration, our agency is making a big commitment to making intersections safer through design. Increased focus on intersection in a streets improvement project. DOT will work on this plan, especially in this year, to expand its full toolkit of treatments. We will focus on Vision Zero priority locations where we have seen fatalities and serious injuries and prioritize investments area as detailed in the New York City Street Plan that I sponsored when I was the chairman of the Transportation Committee. These changes include dedicated turn lanes along with new signals, including more Head Star, also known as LPIs that allow pedestrians to enter the intersections before vehicle can turn. Double the turn coming program. We know drivers take turns more slowly and deliberately when physical elements force them to turn at more appropriate speed. More speed bumps, better cut delineators. Over the last five years, we have seen such treatments slow drivers down 
and reduce pedestrian injuries by 20%. DOT will double the production of such efforts to 200 intersections this year. Race crosswalks. DOT will start a program to construct 100 race crosswalks at curb level annually. Right now, we have only a handful of these crosswalks citywide, but a new contract with our sister agency, DDC, will allow us to do many more. Race crosswalks serve a dual purpose of increasing accessibility for the disability community while at the same time serving as a speed bump to slow drivers. We can do it. The seven million New Yorkers who doesn't have cars expect that New York City will be there for them. From the 8.6 million that we have in our city, as I said before, only 1.4 million of us has vehicle. Seven million New Yorkers, they are pedestrians, they're cyclists. We have a new day, we have a new mayor, we have a new level of collaboration. Today again, we declare our intersections a sacred space and protected space in the city of New York. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. And we want to now bring on the police commissioner of the uh, NYPD. Commissioner? Good morning, everyone, and thank you for being here today. Last year, we lost 122 pedestrians. More than half were killed at intersections where they were simply trying to cross the street, as the mayor stated. Most of these people were struck by cars making turns into the crosswalk, and operators either didn't see them, they were going too fast to stop, or both. We are going to change the outcome this year and create a safer New York for pedestrians. We need to change the behavior that causes these tragedies. We will do that through enforcement and efficiently utilizing our resources to increase public awareness. First, slow down. Second, stop if you see a pedestrian crossing the intersection. That does not mean slow down and navigate your car in between people walking in the crosswalk. It means stop until the crosswalk is clear of pedestrians, then proceed. If our officers see a vehicle failing to stop while pedestrians are crossing in front of it, that's where the enforcement comes in. It could be in the form of a summons or in the form of an arrest in the event someone is hurt, seriously injured, or killed. Since the City Council passed this measure, we have notified the public that it's coming. We've issued warnings, but the time for warnings has come to an end, and it's time to obey this law, and we will be out there to ensure compliance. No officer wants the heartbreaking responsibility of notifying family members that their loved one, and too often a child, has been killed by a motorist who simply wasn't paying enough attention. We will work closely with the Department of Transportation to collaborate and investigate these collisions. We look at it from an enforcement perspective, and the DOT determines the common causes of these tragedies as we seek to engineer a solution that will help reduce risk. That's the partnership we're talking about today. Engineering at these intersections, smarter engineering, and more enforcement by our officers. It's a partnership meant to save lives. A child lost her life this week after being struck by a school bus, a vehicle that should be one of the safest for children. We acknowledge that we need to do more, and we intend to deliver. Thank you. Thank Mr. You. Mayor. Thank you. Thank you so much, Commissioner. And uh, now we want to bring on, uh, sorry, looking over, Fabiola. I want to say a few words. Oh, let me see. You two go after it. You go. Let me let Fabiola do no, it. Come on, sure. Fabiola. Sure. Sure. Yeah, yeah, we want to go. You're on the percent. Councilwoman, how are you? I'm going to start by my heart. My heart, it's in a pain because of what happened this week. My name is Fabiola Mendieta Cuapio, and I'm a member of Family for Safe Streets, the club no one should have joined. I'm here representing all of the families like my own who have empty chairs at our tables because of our children's 
our partners, our siblings, have been stolen from us, killed in crashes. I lost my five-year-old, my son Brian, in traffic violence, and it is far too often, as recently as last night, that I find myself a year another vigil. My heart aches knowing we must now do the same for the 15-year-old Antonina Satulovska. Burying our old children should not be part of parenthood. Crossing the street should not be a death sentence, but it too often is because of dangerous street design and the fact that no safe street system improvements have not been made quickly enough. Traffic violence is a public health crisis, and 2021 was the deadliest year since Vision Zero was started here. Crashes killed five children in Brooklyn alone, but we have the proof told tools that we know will save lives and I'm thrilled to stand here today with Mayor Adams and his administration. Hopeful and optimistic as we hear their commitments to take action without delay to redesign our streets for safety. Prioritizing physical infrastructure to protect all New York City laws. We know Vision Zero is possible. No one should be suffering life-altering injuries or losing their life when walking in a crosswalk. By designing streets so that drivers have no choice but to drive slowly, injuries and fatalities can be prevented. As I have said before, we really don't need or want sympathy anymore. What we need is the leadership and action in street design we are seeing today. And I thank you again, Mayor Eric Adams and your administration for feeling our pain and hitting the call. With the right investment in redesigning our streets, we can save precious lives, like my son, and solve the traffic violence epidemic. Thank you. Thank you so much. I want to bring on our amazing new councilwoman in this area, Councilwoman Rita Joseph. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Rita Joseph, council member for this district. Welcome to my district. Um, traffic violence, and I want to thank the commissioner, uh, my advocates, and the mayor. Um, traffic violence has been personal for me. As a former educator, um, I lost a student, Kyle Francis, and this is something we talk about a lot, Fabiola. Um, so it hasn't left me, even though um, Kyle Francis passed away in 2009, it's personal. So this fight is personal, and I thank you for the initiative. In this district alone, we've had 11 crashes last year, and so many of the crashes um, could have been avoided by improving traffic signals, raising crosswalks, and expanding pedestrian space and visibility measures. We have a real opportunity to save lives. Traffic violence is a crisis that we don't talk about. We talk about every other violence except traffic violence. We need to start having conversation about deaths caused by crashes in the same way that we talk about gun violence. Crossing the street should not be a matter of life or death. Let me, let me repeat that. Crossing the street should never be the difference between life and death. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Oh, good. A lot of this sounds like a repeat of what's happening in Vision Zero, but what if your administration, what if your plan uh, disincentivizes the reason why people might own a car in their first place? Is this just an enforcement and strategy to redesign your recycling, or is this part of a larger strategy to disincentivize car use with large? Well, as a card carrying Metro card user, uh, I think that the best way to get people out of vehicles is to have an A1 transportation system that's safe and reliable. Uh, that is crucial. And as the councilman pointed out, or the commissioner, I'm so used to calling you councilman, <laughs> as the commissioner pointed out, uh, we have done an amazing job to get people out of cars. There's only one point, what's the number? 1.4 million. 1.4 million. That's a really good job because we have the best transportation system on the globe. So 
uh, throughout the years. We have continued to invest in it, and we have to do a great job. If we do that, people will rather not sit in traffic like the traffic we're seeing here. Uh, if we make our streets safer, where people are allowed to feel comfortable in using our bike lanes, which we're going to roll out, if we have our transportation system safe, as we continue to talk about, you're going to see more and more people get out of cars. But we're, let me finish my point. Uh, but the, what we're doing here is we are using the enforcement. This is the number one thing we've heard from advocates, the lack of enforcement. Coordinating with DOT, NYPD, identifying those 1,000 intersections to come up with a strategic way of going after those areas that make them safer, that is different from the previous plan. Yes. Do you think that New York City is the best transportation system on the globe? If that's true, do you believe that? And if that's true, is that sad for the globe? <laughs> um, well... Um, you know, anyone can be cute, but uh, I use this system a lot, and I am really impressed with our system, and my passport is filled with travels across the globe. There aren't too many systems that are open 24 hours. There aren't too many systems where you can swipe a metro card and go from one end of the city to another end of the city. And so if you don't feel it's the best, that's sad for you because I know how good my system is. I love my city and I love my transportation system. And if you travel with me through it, we should take a trip together from one end to the next. And I'm sure you'll see that low income New Yorkers would tell you, without this transportation system, they would not be able to commute in this city. It is the great equalizer because of our transportation system. You take it away, that cook, that accountant, that police officer won't be able to move around this city. Nowhere else on the globe are you able to move around the way we are able to move around in New York City. And that is not my opinion. That is a fact. No, 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 no. Hold on. We don't do it this way. This is the person you're looking at, and he's going to tell you who's going to ask the question. Thank you. Yes, good morning. Specifically around this uh, requirement to stop at all intersections, so even if there is a stop uh, to get pedestrians to the way, and the enforcement on not just drivers but also cyclists. Um, where is the education part of this campaign so that drivers and cyclists are aware that this is going to be coming? And I also wonder what your position is. Well, there's been a lot of discussion on removing uh, police officers from traffic. Okay, um, uh, the council, the con <laughs> the commissioner, <laughs> the commissioner is going to talk about the education. Uh, I am a believer that enforcement should be a combination of uh, those who are traffic enforcement those who are um, police officers. Uh, I don't subscribe to the theory that police officers should sit back and watch a traffic infraction, infraction take place and say that uh, that is not my job. I don't subscribe to that. My police officers are on patrol 24 hours, seven days a week. If they observe any form of traffic infraction or any form of illegal action, I expect them to take action. So I don't subscribe to the theory uh, that they should not do it. They should do it in a respect respectable way. They should be courteous. They should not be disrespectful, but they should enforce the laws. You want to talk about the education? The important part of this campaign is that, first of all, DOT will be investing millions of dollars in this campaign, and that investment will be, a, you will see that investment in our mainstream media, but also in our ethnic media. Mayor Aaron created the mayor's office of ethnic community media, and this is going to be one of the sources that will be used to be sure that the message goes to the drivers in their own language, in all community across the five boroughs. But also the investment in education will also be aligned with Chief uh, Royce here who, with the leadership of the commission and NYPD, 
I was there as a witness last week when she brought all the inspectors from the Bronx, as she's doing all the inspector and captain through the five borough, being sure that they are ready to go out combining education and enforcement. And, and just, uh, Gloria, just to answer your question, in addition to that, something that we have not done enough of, we're going to roll it out in schools. I mean, what's the best place for education than in the Department of Education? Uh, there needs to be a real um, program in place, and we're going to meet with the chancellor to coordinate with DOT and come up with some real user-friendly ways of educating our children on how to move through the streets. A class trip should be not only getting to the destination, but it should involve stopping at the corner, speaking to our young people, letting them be involved in real ways. Uh, for us, classrooms are not going to be just inside buildings, but we're going to do it in schools as well. I can ask you, um, and the commissioner as well, since you're both here on public safety, you spoke about public safety last night, and you're recommended uh, for Michelle Elizabeth and You've been talking about what needs to be done. I know you rolled out the plan to put more police officers on the subway. Um, 42nd Street Station, probably one of the most controlled subway stations uh, around the city at this season and still took place. So I wonder if there's anything else in the opportunity for the whole country in terms of your response, uh, since you're talking about the people who are feeling safe, uh, you know, it's like the balance and reality and perception. Okay, a great question, Gloria. Um, the, we're going to constantly evolve, and I say this over and over again, that sometimes when a terrible incident uh, that shocks the entire city uh, happens, we really don't see how many cases we prevented. No one see the cases that are prevented. We, you know, a case like that just really sort of highlights how important it is. One area I really want to focus on is that we have to do a better job in having those who are disruptive on the system appear to have real uh, mental health crises, that we have to do a better job to give them the services they need and not leave them on the system. Right now, our hands are tied a lot that if you see someone uh, loud, disruptive, you, you know, there are rules that can have that person removed, but it's a very delicate balance. And so what we want to do in my conversations with the governor is to get more mental health professionals right away deployed. As soon as that officer identifies there's someone at the 42nd Street Station that appears to have a mental health issue, we need to get people there right away uh, to do so. That is the next step we want to do, and it's going to, we're going to need this assistance from the state to assist us with this. But that's the next level of evolution uh, that's there. We don't want this to be just police. We don't want that. But we need to get the mental health professionals responding in a faster manner. And right now, I don't think we're doing a good enough job of doing so. To go back on what you talked about, about the uh, transit system, specifically the complaint from, you mentioned earlier, about the bus system, which uh, the buses are typically stuck behind traffic. In fact, we see one right now to be 16 stuck behind a bunch of cars and trucks. So when it comes to the rolling out of future plan for transit, wouldn't that involve passing on the streets right now for buses, specifically busways? And then the second part of the question is for the commissioner, uh, too, is whether we're going to have additional officers actually enforcing fare and yield, or we're going to do that for the same number. Okay, when I say uh, transit system, I'm not talking about trains only. Uh, my definition of transit system is every mode of transportation, public transportation, that includes buses. And our amazing uh, commissioner is going to roll out his plan on buses. Right now, the plan we're rolling out, which is, I think, is a plan that we should commend the commissioner for doing so in the first two and a half weeks of going after those uh, violent, watch, watch it, watch, going, after you, going after those violent intersections. Uh, it, it is zeroing in on a problem, and I thank him for doing so. The goal is to improve our transportation system, and that includes uh, both trains, uh, buses, and any other form of transportation. Commissioner, you want to?
to your question, it's not so much that we're going to have additional offers, officers that are going to be focused on it. Every officer is going to be focused on it. And when they see these infractions, they will be enforcing them. Well said, well said. Good night. Every, every time I hear you, I realize I make the best pick for the police commission. <laughs> you were just a real... I, I see. I, I hear. I hear. Yeah, a real, real, real concern. I see it. Uh, the other day, I was riding my bike across uh, the uh, Brooklyn Bridge, and you know, you realize that the combination of e-bikes, of scooters, of you know, all the different forms of transportation, and I think it goes back to what Gloria said. Uh, there must be a real education on how to use these streets safely. And uh, I'm asking both the commissioners, both commissioners uh, to come up with a real coordinated effort of how do we do a better enforcement uh, without penalizing. A lot of these uh, e-bikes are used for delivery services, and we're not trying to over-penalize uh, those uh, low income and low wage employees, but we do have to come up with a real plan of making sure these bikes are not creating a hazard, and that is something we want to roll out in, in the future. Thanks, folks. Mr. Mayor, have you identified any, any specific energy?